Welcome back for another video guys. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this. A uh, simple project that just turned out amazing. Uh, it's a coat rack and a hat rack. So a couple of things you're going to need and if, if you like this as much as I did you can actually uh, keep this as a pattern and then you can turn, turn one of these out in probably less than an hour. Okay, So uh, just a really fun project. Some of the things you're going to need. Now these brass hooks, um, and I will try to link everything that I can for you, but these brass hooks, this is a two and a half inch long hook here, and then the cap hook is just simply, and again, uh, two hooks was less than $4, okay? Uh, the horseshoes, I think they were around $4 a set, $5 a set, so 10 bucks in horseshoes. Um, <clears throat> you're going to need some horseshoe nails. Now, the only nails that I could find that was in the copper color was two and a quarter long. So in the video, I will show you how to cut these down because at the end of it, we don't want any of the screws or nails penetrating the back of it where we have to mount this against the wall. Okay? So you're going to need those. Uh, you will need 16 of the uh, horseshoe nails. And they, that's a, an attractive nail. That's a square nail. And again, you can nail it right onto a horse and he'd be running down the highway for you. Okay? Now, our board material here, this is the same material that they use for bed slatting. And if you could find this, if you wanted to make more than one of these, if you could find this in a 12 foot section, then you're going to have a minimal amount of scrap. But this is two and three eighths wide, uh, three quarters of an inch thick. And like I said, uh, you're going to need a piece at minimum length of 30 and 3 quarters, okay? So everything's in, illustrated for you in the video. And if you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button and like for us. Uh, we can continue to do projects like this, and I do appreciate your support. So let's get on with the video. But you can also use a rough sawn cedar um, or an oak or any wood of your choice in order to mount your horseshoes to okay now I've laid this out we are 30 and 3 quarters we're going to saw this board off we're also going to rub these corners up a little bit we don't want any sharp corners on it so we're just going to take and, and run these corners back just a little bit we want to leave it a little rough for our parents but we can take the edges off okay let's get that done Now we have our center line laid out on our mounting board and before we start drilling holes or laying this out a couple of things to mention here because you know how when you order things sometimes it's different so if your hardware that you have ordered and I have left links in there for you to find this stuff our hook the screw holes back here need to be three quarters of an inch apart you can turn around here where you can see it so center to center on the hook hole will be three quarters of an inch and that will determine how this lays out and if your hooks is at that measurement then you can use the diagram here as well as the horseshoe and again um, <clears throat> everything is slightly different when you order it but we're going to make sure from the second hole here that we are four inches across to the center of the hole. Hold it up there where we can see it. All right. Now, if your horseshoe, if you've ordered a different horseshoe than what we are looking at here, that's more than fine. Simply use the uh, diagram and place your hooks and you can go ahead and drill all your hooks on here. They will stay the same and they will be centered up. And then simply place your horseshoe that you have ordered to the center of the hook on the mounting board and draw where you need to drill holes for the screw uh, the uh, nails that you're going to put in here okay that's pretty simple and again you know how when you order things sometimes it's never the same but basically when you end up the mounting uh, the hook here should be in the center of your horseshoe 
okay? And again, if you want to get creative and turn your horseshoe sideways, uh, um, be as artful as you choose to here, okay? Just know that these hooks need to be centered up in order to keep our layout in the right direction. Now, the same way with the nails, um, and again, I do have links in there, and unfortunately, they're the only the smallest box I could find has 250 count in it. So, if you're going to make more than one of these, that's going to be suitable. If not, you're going to have some extra nails laying around, and it's actually not a bad thing if you do a lot of crafts at home. Okay, so this E6 Slim will determine how far the nail head sets down into this horseshoe and we want our sticking out a little bit so we get that uh, appearance and you can actually see it okay now I'm going to show you this diagram and it, again if everything's measuring the same that you have ordered we'll be able to lay this out and drill all the holes except for these bottom holes in the horseshoe and we will wait until we get everything laid out and then after we are able to actually set this horseshoe down and you'll see this later in the video then we will mark these bottom ones and drill for the bottom uh, run of nails and they will go down in this third hole on our mounting plate all right so let me show you this layout diagram and I'll explain this to you okay this diagram I've made for us first of all the H that you're going to see down through here represent our hook holes the HS stands for our horseshoe holes, okay? Then as you need to lay this out, you'll know where you're going. Then secondly, uh, the first line, the 24 inch hole, uh, mounting sender, if you know that they need this on 24 inches, then you can go ahead and drill this. But if not, I would refrain from drilling that. You don't really need it in there. Stan standard homes are always framed on 16 inch centers, which is going to be down here, and down here so again you would not need to drill that 24 inch uh, hole at the uh, 24 and 3 quarter line okay so you don't have to do that but if you think they need it on two foot centers then go ahead and drill it in or if you want to be prepared either way then drill all of them so <clears throat> and again we're working on the, the uh, mounting board itself is 30 and 3 quarters and then each one of these numbers represents what we are going to be laying out and drilling down through here. It makes it real simple because you simply have to go uh, lay it out and then drill the holes one time and you're going to be primarily ready for assembly. I'm going to let you look at that and you can copy this and uh, <clears throat> that's everything you're going to need there excluding when we have to come back and drill for the uh, bottom of the horseshoe itself and we will wait until we have everything else laid out to do that. And take your time here. It's uh, these measurements are important, and again, as long as your hardware is matching up, um, you're going to be able to walk right down through this board and lay it out and make it real easy for yourself. Keep everything centered up. back down the list now and make absolutely sure that I have everything measured off properly before we go on to the assembly stage. Actually we're going to clean this up and stain it first. Alright, when you're dealing with stain, enamel stain, um, <clears throat> make sure that you have your area to where you can ventilate it. This stuff does give off fumes. I have poured a little bit onto a paper plate and after we are done staining this I'm going to set the paper plate as well as our baseboard here outside and let this stuff cure a little bit. You don't want to be breathing, you know, long, long term on these fumes because they can be toxic. Now, latex gloves, and I'm simply going to use a paper towel. And the thing with stain, 
The longer you leave it on the wood before you wipe off the excess, the darker it is. If you want a light coat, just simply brush it on and wipe it right back off. If you want a darker coat, let it set on for a couple of minutes and then wipe off the excess. This is really simple. I'm going to go for a, a little bit lighter coat. And if you need to, you can apply two coats if it's not dark enough for you. Each coat you, you uh, put on, it will continuously get darker until you get to where you want to go. Now, there's actually another thing we can do while we're waiting on this to dry, and I'm going to show you how to cut the horseshoe nails down to where we don't have a nail sticking through the back of this. So we can do that while this is drying. Okay, so our next process, and they did not have any shorter nails when I purchased these. Uh, this is a two and a quarter inch nail, so I'm going to have to cut it down. <clears throat> and what I'm going to want to do is put this in my horseshoe, and then we know that our board is three quarters of an inch thick, so we cannot be longer than three quarters of an inch. I'm going to cut that back about an eighth of an inch, actually. So from the bottom of the horseshoe, uh, five eighths of an inch is going to be my measurement. See that back, like I said, at five eighths. Double check my measurement after I get it drawn across here. Yep, five eighths. That'll allow us to drive this into our board and not go through the back of it. Okay, and then you can cut this several ways. I do have a pair of bolt cutters, and this is going to make this easy. So I can just get to my mark. Trim this nail up. I have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. But now, uh, this is roughly an inch and a quarter long. And again, this won't stick through the back of our board, but it's really going to look good against this black horseshoe. This is a copper colored nail. And when we get that to our board, that's really going to stand out against this black. That's going to look really good for us. Okay? Now, if you don't have a set of bolt cutters, you can use side cutters or you can clamp this down to your table, measure it out and actually use a hacksaw, just however you need to cut it or you can actually buy an inch and a quarter nail if you can find them. I have 16 of these guys laid out and again I just simply cut one of them and then used it as a measurement to mark the rest of my nails out. I am going to go to the second hole from the top and that will be where we drilled down our center line of the board for the rest of these and I'm going to get that into place and just simply set one of these nails and start it in there so I know it stays centered now this is going to allow me to mark the third hole down from the top and I will use my punch to do that right in the center of the uh, board in the nail hole just like that and then <clears throat> we can leave this in place we can take the nails out now so we're not fiddling with these because you'll drop them we can set us the second horseshoe up here now this next hole coming up is another mounting hole if you're going to put this on 16 inch centers that will be the hole you're, you would use so we're going to skip over that and we're going to go to the next hole in line. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We're on the seventh hole now. And we will go to, again, the second one down from the top. Okay, we're ready for assembly. We've got our next set of holes drilled in for the uh, square nails, the shoe nails. And again, we skip that first hole. Now you're going to need a, a firm uh, area to work here because we are going to drive these nails in. You don't have to use a lot of force because we we uh, drill these holes in. They don't have to be super tight but snug. Get this lined up for my second line here. 
about there. Well, that's going to look nice. Make sure your nail gets started into the hole that you pre drilled. Okay. We're going to leave them out just a little bit. And again, now we don't want anything through the bottom side. And I think we've taken care of that. Look at that. That looks fantastic. All right, let's keep going. It's time for the pretty stuff. Oh, this is looking good, great, guys. The hook overall length, and this is a hat and coat hook, but uh, that is two and a half inches from here to here, okay? So if you're looking and can't find this exact brand, that'll give you a reference to what we are actually using here. Now, <clears throat> We'll get this separated. This is no place, because we have pre-drilled these, this is no place for a drill. We don't want to strip these holes out when we're running these small brass screws in there. So use a screwdriver. You're almost done and it's going to look great. Get these guys opened up. I'm trying to escape there. Okay. Now, Oh, it's perfect. There's another one out of there. And like I said, don't over tighten these, but make sure they're snug. Put a thread right down in there for you. And that's the luxury of pre drilling the hole. You don't have to fight with this stuff. I leave that one loose until I get this other guy seated up now. That way we can get everything good and square. Now again, as far as your base here, you can use any type of wood, a, a really nice oak board or cedar board, um, you know, so whatever you choose there. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to mount the rest of these. When you see it again, it'll be finished. All right, guys, let's do the big reveal. Look at that. I mean, it, it really did turn out good. What, what a great gift idea. Okay, now. Uh, I have the two two and a quarter inch mounting screws here and I would suggest that they this is on 16 inch centers for these two holes and that's your typical construction and I would suggest that they run these into the studs at home because when you come in, in the winter time you've got your heavy coats on specifically if it's been raining or something like that uh, there will be a lot of weight on this wall uh, specifically if you have four coats hung up so again into the, into the studs and they'll never have any problems with it and another thing I noticed is we still had down on the bottom of our horseshoes there's still a couple, a couple of open holes that they could put S hooks and things in and you could hang your keys from it as well so yeah I mean that turned out really well okay just simple project a lot of fun I from start to finish now that we have all the measurements um, I, I think you could have this done in less than an hour and, and just really have a good time doing it, okay? Again, uh, whatever you want to use for a base, um, <clears throat> you, can, you can make these things probably, you know, um, just however you want to do it. You can even get creative with tipping the horseshoes and different things like that, okay? So there you have it. Uh, this has been a great project. I hope you enjoy it. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.